at 31, I had a question coming out of section 2.6, number 21. And here we were given this equation and asked to solve it. So you can see my variable hanging out right there, but it's it's kind of, not even kind of, it's under a radical. Right, so I, I have to let it escape from that radical. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do, and let me erase this just a bit because I've already junked this up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. And the reason I'm going to opt to square both sides is because the secret index here is a 2. So whatever the index of your radical is, what you would do is you would take that number and you would turn it into an exponent on both sides of your equation. And that's actually what you see me doing right here. And then because this is a square root and this is a square here, these are going to cancel. And that leaves me with the left side of just x minus 7 and 5 squared. Well, 5 times 5 is 25. And I add 7 in the other side. And there's my answer. Now, the thing that you want to check whenever you're doing these radical problems is, is you want to go ahead and take that solution, and in this case, 32. You want to plug it back into the original equation because sometimes with radicals, you get extraneous solutions. And what I mean by that is there are times that you'll get a nice answer like this of 32, and it doesn't actually work in the original problem. So here you see me checking that it worked in the original problem, right? I put 32 in for x, 32 minus 7 is 25, and the square root of 5, excuse me, the square root of 25 is 5, so that checked out. So I actually get to keep my solution for this particular problem. But like I said, I just want you to get in the habit of make sure you check that, that solution that you get because there are times when you'll run into an extraneous one. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.